Hi, I'm Pastor David Franklin, and uh, if you were to make New Year's resolutions for the church, what would you seek to improve? Well, I'm talking with a few pastors here, and uh, we're excited to have these young, uh, capable pastors who are sitting here with, uh, on the set, and I'd love for you guys to introduce yourself to, uh, to our, our, our viewing audience. Uh, Jeff, introduce yourself. I'm Jeff Starr. I'm from West Virginia. I pastor one church there, and I do some youth work, and I do summer camps there. So. Awesome. Glad to be here. Awesome. Glad to have you. Jason? Uh, Jason Foster, and I have the privilege of, of running our youth camp in Pennsylvania, along with uh, being a dean at our, at our dormitory at our academy, Blue Mountain, and I uh, pastor a church in Reading as well. Cool. Uh, Jorge Coxac. I have three churches in northern New Jersey. I'm working with uh, an elementary school also there in northern New Jersey, and just happy to be here and serving the Lord. Praise the Lord, man. Diego? Uh, I'm pastoring uh, two churches in the Baltimore area. Okay, very good. Well, it, it's exciting to have all of you here, uh, for us to be here, you know, um, to be able to talk about what's, uh, uh, what's happening in, our, in the areas that we work and, and, and also in our church. As a pastor myself, I, I know that things can get difficult sometimes. And so I want to jump right in <laughs> and really, what's that? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I want to jump right in. And, and there was an article that was written in the Columbian Union that all of us were featured in. Mm -hmm. um, and we had some different comments, some uh, challenges to the church, and then also some solutions or resolutions for the church. And, and I want to pick up with you, Jeff. I want to start with you. You wrote in your article, I often ask young, our young people if they're proud of the church and too many aren't, so they don't invite people. You know, I was, when I read that, that comment, I was referred back to a article that Roger Dudley wrote some 20 years ago that he uh, had youth respond, and they said the number one reason why youth don't stay in the church is because uh, the church doesn't pay them enough attention. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering how you think those two ideas relate, uh, this lack of attention and also the fact that, that the youth don't feel proud to invite people to their church. Well, I think it leads into the one 20 years ago that Roger Dudley wrote. If that's, that was the case 20 years ago, that has led into a youth, a young person, a young adult not caring about the church. And so if, if I don't feel invested in, why would I then invest mm -hmm. into the church as well? So I think that if that's the case back then, which I believe it, it was, that led into what we find today with people not proud and people not caring about what goes on in the church because we're not doing, we're not caring about others. We're not winning their confidence. We're not winning their trust because we don't actually care about other people. And, and by default, our very own youth, with their, which are yeah. in the church. Yeah. Now, you talked about being invested in. What does that mean? Everything that it can mean with, with time, with money. With, with giving them resources, giving our youth or, or young people resources to use, uh, but it's, it's more than that. It's, it's about showing them and teaming up with them and saying, hey, I want to do ministry with you. Mm. I have a young son at home, and, and I, sometimes when, when he has to stay home, when I, do, when I go out to do ministry, he's not happy, or when he has to sit on the sidelines. Uh, if I involve him, he's happy, he's, mm. he wants to do it, and I, and I think that's the same case with, as, we, as they grow up, as we deal with a young adult person, if we involve them and really invest in them and the people we're ministering to, not just to say, well, yeah, we did that, or yeah, we tried to talk to that person about Christ, but did you really take time to know that person mm -hmm. and bring along a young adult with, them, with you or a young person? Jason, you're a dean at, a, at an academy. Jump in on this. The lack of attention, not feeling proud, the investment that we make in our youth. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, I, you know, my time as a dean has... I mean, giving me a perspective that is unique from my from my role as a pastor because I live in the environment with the guys. Mm -hmm. it, it's day in and day out. And the thing that you learn about youth really quick is either you are who you say you are or you're not. Mm -hmm. And they identify it immediately. Um, and so being a transparent man with them, um, even if the news is bad sometimes, mm -hmm. even if I have to be truthful that, that I'm not this perfect guy, yeah. um, builds a connection. I think what Jeff was saying is so important. It builds a connection with them that allows us to move forward together, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, to me, I think that's crucial then is that you, you, you connect with your kids in a way where there's a partnership right. as, as you both grow. And so, so that, now this, what you're talking about is, it could be potentially scary for, <laughs> for foe, right? I mean, couldn't it be? Oh, yeah. You know, I, what you're saying is, is that, hey, listen, even when I faltered or, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't fulfill or, 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 or meet the standard right. that I had even set or encouraged them to meet, right. 
then you're saying, hey, listen, be honest with that and share that and, and also talk to them about how they can grow out of that and, and, and recover from that. That, yeah. that can be a scary, particularly for older generations who maybe have always worked a, a, a along the, the mindset that you just, you know, you don't share those intimate details right. of your life. Nor do you make the mistakes. There, right. there, there's this this <laughs> perception that you don't make these mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know when you take the time to admit them, that's the truth. And you can always build on the truth. But anything that you build on that's not truth, also everything moving there forward isn't necessarily mm -hmm. going to be genuine. Mm. Jorge, jump in on this. Well, the Bible is very real. Mm -hmm. You understand? When you look at David's life, David was a man of God, mm -hmm. a man after God's own heart, but. When you analyze all the details of his life, he was a man who fell into sin, mm -hmm. a man who was led by his passions and all of these things. And what makes the Bible so relatable is that real factor. Mm -hmm. And I believe that what he's saying and, 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 and tagging along is that, that the young people need that. They need to be integrated into the whole process. You know, they need to be brought into the board meetings. You know, I have young people sitting through my board meetings. You know, I, they, they need to be uh, leading out in ministries. Uh, it's like my little sister at home, you know, uh, Susanna, she, she goes into the room, uh, but until she paints it and puts up her things on the wall, that's right. when it becomes a room. That's an excellent comment. We're going to pick up this conversation in just a minute. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back.